What's up guys and gals and welcome back to the Nerd Castle for the next episode of this war of mine And you'll forgive me for a moment while I fiddle with my head muffs here There we go, so my head muffs are all better It appears as though we survived yet another night And I am thinking that the ability to... What's going on here? What is going on? There we go, I feel like my camera's all weird and locked right now I don't know, weird things are happening Let's get people into bed Obviously we want Bruno to be recovering for as much as... Yeah I think I'll let him recover a little while longer, but I'm going to have him make a meal a little bit later, too. And I think we'll keep Anton up as our guy of the hour. So we'll have him make some water. We have quite a few filters, and so I figure... Oh, never mind. Do it. There you go. Do it. I tell you, I command you. The name of the Emperor. I'm, I'm a big Warhammer 40k fan, in case you guys hadn't figured it out yet. I know there's going to be quite a few people coming in because we front-paged for this war of mine. And so there's going to be a lot of new people watching this series. And so, if you haven't watched anything else on my channel, I could eat anything. Anything? That's a risky proposition, my friend. That's a very, very risky set of wordage there. Anything? I mean, I don't want to sound too much like the Wishmaster. By the way, I really like the Wishmaster movies. It's like one of those weird groups of horror movies that I've watched most of them, and I really actually enjoy it. I love the weird little clever ways that the demon ends up like... Just giving people what they want, but not in a way they expected. I love that. That's what I've always liked about the Wishmaster. Also, he has the Dreamcast logo on his chest. Like, right around his nipples. It's a backwards Dreamcast logo, but still. Around the time of those movies. Well, no. Oh my god, this la- Oh, she brought us something! Yay! I was about to be like, oh, this lady again? Are you serious, lady? Why don't you all just move in here with us? It'll make my life easier. Like, it'll be like six people to feed, but at least you'll be like in the house and I won't have to leave people out possibly getting killed. Bring me the shotgun. Why not take it? Well, I don't know what it is. If you're going to hand me an activated grenade, I don't want it. Oh, she gave us the shotgun. Oh, I'm so happy right now. Ah, Oh, it's broken. Thank you so much for protecting us. My sister and her husband came to visit us. They live in another part of town and invited us to stay with them. I think we'll be safer there, so we're leaving. But before we go, I wanted to thank you and give you my husband's shotgun along with the rest of our ammunition. We won't need it anymore, I hope. Okay. Cool. I hope you don't need to use it, but you never know. Okay, well thank you. I guess that that came around full circle and I'm glad that we did help her now. I, I know that I was grousing and lamenting the fact that I was a nice guy, but it appears to have turned out okay for us, and now we have two guns. We got mad gats now. Oh, the shoddy looked kind of broken. Why would you... It was working the other day. How did you guys break it in between here and there? All right, let's go to the metal shop and figure out... That being the case, I want to get the metal shop fixed up because that gives us two guns, which means now that if I can find a third gun, our scavenger can bring a gun with him when he goes out, which is going to really, really help us. So we can't fix the gun as it stands right now. Let's go ahead and upgrade the bench, I guess. Because I want to be able to fix that gun either tonight or the next day. If we can't fix the shotgun, it's going to be... Well, I mean, we're surviving okay as of right now, but imagine having two guards who can shoot at people and, like, handle our business, you know what I mean? Versus having just one guard that has a gun and one guard with a knife. Our combat effectiveness just went up by astronomical amounts. If we have two ranged weapons now, our house is defendable. I mean, good things are happening. Good things are happening. And so it's going to cost us seven weapon parts? Hell yeah. Okay, so Anton, you go back down in there. You're a mathematician. We're not going to have you build guns right now. I'm sure that your mathematician skills have nothing to do with the fact that you're, you know good at repairing guns, but let's go ahead and swap that in real fast. Making use of the time that we have. Making use of the time that we have. He's hungry, he's sick, and he's slightly wounded. Everybody's not feeling so great. I know that when winter time gets here, I think we run a greater risk of getting sick or something like that. That's not how getting sick works, but I'm not going to question it. I'm going to go with, oh, we can build saws too. I may do that next because there's a couple locations that I wanted to saw into. Let's go ahead and we'll make the shotgun for right now because that's the big thing for today. If we can get that shotgun, that means that I think we're probably not going to have too many more problems at home. I'm also thinking about maybe robbing the hospital, but we'll see what happens. I could technically take some of these guys over there and try and get them feeling a little bit better, but since we don't have time, when was the last time I smoked? I don't know. I'm helping you like better your life right now. Don't gripe about it. I'd like to make a meal. If we can manage it. I mean, I don't know if we have enough fuel, but... So for right now, yeah, we don't have a lot of fuel, but... 
We got guns. We've got a lot of things to look forward to right now. We've got a lot of things going for us, which is different. Like, that doesn't happen very often for us. I mean, it's rare that we're in a situation where we can make use of things as we are right now. How much water do I have at the moment? 13. Not enough. All right, let's go back and we'll get started on some more filters. And I guess we'll just have to figure things out as we go today. I'm going to use up the remainder of my componentry because water is important. And once winter gets here, from what I understand, we won't be able to get water anymore from the rain catches. We'll have to melt it with the furnace instead. And I think that process is actually a lot more difficult, as I recall. It seems like it's a little bit worse. We'll get those filters made. You get over here. All right, we'll start that off. And then we'll have him sprint down here and eat. I'm going to leave... I'm going to leave Pavel where he's at for right now. I'll feed him tomorrow. I didn't really have time today. I'm hoping that some more food will come down the pipe pretty shortly. But right now we have kind of a... We have a fuel shortage at the moment. So we need to solve that in the next episode. As I recall, there was a whole bunch of wood left over at the abandoned squat. And so if I take a... Ooh, I actually... We might not get this done in time. I may have messed up. How long... Ah, yeah, I screwed up. I needed to make a saw. And it takes a half hour. I made a mistake. Okay, so that might change our trajectory slightly of what we want to accomplish. It's nighttime. We've got people who can guard now. And so I think I'll let him slightly sick, slightly wounded, and sad. I'm going to let him sleep in bed to see if I can get him patched. Actually, no. I'll have him sleep in bed. You two go on guard duty with guns. I'm going to send him out to scavenge. We've got the decrepit squat, which is 65%. I think I'd rather go back to the garage, though. Like, I don't really want to murder people, but if I have to... Let's maybe a semi-detached house. I think we needed a shovel for that place. Let's go to the supermarket again, actually. Let's go to the supermarket and... I'm going to bring a knife along with me and a lockpick just in case. I mean, a crowbar might work instead of a knife. And we'll just bring the lockpick and the knife for now. Let's be on our way. I am going to get very, very aggressive with anybody that decides to, you know, threaten my livelihood here. I don't know what we're up against on this map, and I want to be careful about engagements. So first things first, let's wander over here. And just kind of get eyes on for a second. That floor looks clear. Let's go upstairs and see what's going on up here. That floor looks clear too. So let's just be in and out as fast as we can. And I'll watch out for footsteps or anything else while we're running about. There's extra bait for our traps. We did upgrade our metalworking place, so we might be able to make use of some of this ammunition. Some more parts right there. I'm going to go ahead and step into the shadows real fast while I scout out a bit better. Okay, so step out of the shadows. Let's go over here. I don't know if there's anybody actually here right now. We need supplies. We need really anything that I can get my hands on. Actually, look through right there. Look through right there. Let's see. Okay, so there's no snipers on that side, at least. Let's check roof side. I know this is very, very dangerous and very, very risky because we might get sniped off the roof by somebody. We're making ourselves a very big target right now. But we're hurting a little bit. So I need to make sure that if we can get our hands on stuff, that we're putting our hands on it. God, the sound of that gunshot scared the hell out of me. Some of this stuff I may not keep. I'm just gathering it up right now so that I can drop it at a different location just in case. I like the epic music up in here, though. I feel like I'm looting looting in front of a very epic place with like flags waving and stuff like that. There's some vegetables growing on the roof. I don't know if I trust roof vegetables, but we've got plenty of water, so I'll probably dump that for right now. Probably grab the wood instead and the extra firearm supplies. I'll probably also get rid of the homegrown tobacco. If we can make bullets later on, I would prefer to do it. But for right now, we're just kind of gathering things up. Let's check this pile over here. We can come back tomorrow. It's not a big deal. Now that the place is abandoned, I'm not actually that concerned about it. 
Okay, so we've got a little bit of extra wood. How about we leave the ammunition behind for right now? I realize this might be a bad choice. But for the moment, I'd like to just take building materials for a second. Please don't slip and fall. That would be really, really bad. Be laying around with a half-broken neck, your face all looking the wrong direction, just like, I don't know what's going on, but I don't feel right. <laughs> I'd be like, yeah, it's because your head's facing the wrong direction. So we got eight wood. We're restocking right now. I think taking the extra wood is probably a good plan, and so that's what I'm going to do. we got some extra food so that we can cook a double meal. We've got that so that we can bait a trap. I may not bring the part along with me because I think we're actually okay on parts for a second. What time is it? 11.30? We're still okay? There may be other problems here. That's the other thing that I'm slightly worried about. Since we're getting closer to winter, I think I'm going to start bringing... Oh, you're just going to jump down like that. Okay. All right, action Chuck. You don't have to be a badass right now. I think I brought too much stuff with me, but I think we got a good run going, and that'll give us enough fuel. If winter gets here, I need to make sure that I have the ability to make fires so that I can heat my house. That's going to be a very, very major problem for us in the future if I can't get that taken care of, and so that's why I'm focusing so heavily on wood right now. Frankly, I'm finding that across the game, it's actually a much better plan to bring home hardcore supplies that you can just build stuff out of than anything else. I mean, I would like to bring home the gunpowder and the bullets because being able to give ourselves some DACA is nice, but Bruno has a deep wound. He could do with some bandages. It took us five bullets to fend them off. Ooh, that was a lot worse than I expected. If we don't get the ability to make our own ammo pretty soon, we might end up in trouble. So he's wounded. We've got a band-aid for it, so that's okay. Let's go ahead and I'm going to put everybody to bed that needs to go to bed. And so he'll dress his wound up in a top hat or maybe something a little bit less fancy. I don't mind either way. And so, oh, he's not tired. Okay, good. So let's have him actually jump back in. We'll have him start replacing filters and doing some of these little things that need to get done around the house. On this side, we'll have Bruno crash out for the next couple hours to maybe see if he can feel a bit better. Because obviously he's not looking so great. I mean, he's not losing weight or anything, so I'm assuming he's fine. We'll swap that filter out. We'll get the traps replaced. We'll do the best that we can with what we have. Not a whole lot of supplies right now. We do have a lot of food, which is of benefit to us, but... How much moonshine could I make right now? We got 21 water. We're actually almost out of sugar, interestingly enough. It doesn't happen very often, but we're almost out of it. Let me have you swap out the filter over here. It is indeed getting a little bit chilly, although nobody's complained about it yet. I mean, 14 degrees Celsius, you double it and add 32, so 28, and then 60 degrees Fahrenheit, maybe? That's not too bad. I mean, I wouldn't worry about it until we get down to around 8-ish, and then at that point, I start to worry. They've all got jackets and coats and pants and things, so I'm not really worried about... You know, us freezing to death right now, especially since we're living underground. The deeper into the ground you get, the more the temperature normalizes. So the basement tends to be actually fairly no warm by comparison to an unheated area. I mean, it's better than being outside for sure, especially if everybody's sleeping down there and keeping it warm with body heat. Let's see if we can make more bullets. We really need to make some bullets. How do you make bullets? It doesn't look like we actually have the capability to do so. So when we run out of ammo, this is going to get really, really nasty for us. I did want to make a saw. So we'll make that so that we can hit the decrepit squat tonight. But beyond that, we need to figure out how we can make ourselves some bullets. So we made ourselves an axe. Or I'm sorry, we made ourselves a saw. I know the difference between a saw and an axe. I've done hard work. And if we wanted to make a... Maybe we have to upgrade this again so that we can get... Let me look at the upgrades possible for the metal shop over here. So, for making tools, we can fix all broken firearms. We can refill empty shell casings so that we can use them. What is that, a mixer? Alright, so it's going to take us a long time to get to there. So, in fact, we're sort of racing time right now, which is not good because time tends to be a little bit faster than me. I think... Let's scan the radio for a second. I'm hoping the crime wave ends pretty soon because we're really, really defending ourselves lately. How many bullets do we have left? 13. Okay, so we can hold out for another three or four days of getting raided, but it's not going to be good. Getting food is now a priority. We must persevere. It's true. Okay, bands of looters are on the rampage, attacking homes every single night. Extreme vigilance is cautioned. So it looks like there's probably not going to be any break in the amount of people who are attacking us. 
Coffee is once again available in Pagoran. It remains an expensive commodity, but the price is no longer border on extortion. Classical music. It's cool outside. Grab a book and relax by the fireplace. Okay. I'll probably leave that on then. Maybe help people out with their mood or whatever it is that they're doing right now. Probably help by getting firewood done over here as well. So how much wood do we have? Twelve. Let's go ahead and we'll make five fuel right now. And then hopefully on the next day. I think we're going to get a lot of wood tonight. It's too damn easy to get wounded. That's actually a very real concern if you're in a survival situation. If you didn't watch my previous series where I talked about a lot of survival tips and things like that, I spend a lot of time out in the wilderness and I actually, I fancy studying survivalism a lot. I went through a period where I was doing lots of outdoor survey work and things like that where you would be two hours from the nearest town, four hours from the nearest, I mean you'd be one hour from the nearest village, two hours from the nearest town, and four hours from the nearest hospital. And it's one of those things where your knowledge in that situation can keep you you can keep you alive a little bit longer. And so you have to be careful about it. He's no longer tired, so we'll go ahead and get him up real fast. He's slightly wounded and recovering, but we have a lot of people who are really hungry right now, so I need to get some food cooked. We'll go ahead and we'll do that first. So that's going to be the double meal right there. And that should allow us to get Pavel back up and running. And then for everybody else, we'll just cook like a basic meal, I think. And then... It should be okay. We've got enough food to last a little while. So there's that. Let's have Pavel get up. And we'll have him double eat since it's been a really, really long time since he ate last. Do we have any filters left? Go ahead and swap that out if we don't. We are out of filters. Okay. So Pavel, eat yourself another helping pal. You've been doing real good on the watch. And so... Uh, how much water do we have? 24. Okay, I'm going to leave the water where it's at for right now. We don't really have a whole lot of trade goods, but I simply cannot risk it at the moment using up my components that much. Over here on this side, let's cook a few more meals. I think we need three. And that leaves us with enough left to make a meal tomorrow. I wish that you got another button that came off to the side so as it was cooked, you could have people come down and eat. Go ahead and order them all down here then because we are running short on time. Okay, and believe me, if there's anybody who knows about running short, it would be me. I'm like five foot three, and I run like four or five miles a day, so, you know, I run short every single day. I have experience with this phenomenon. I don't have a problem with it. I'm not insecure about it. I run short every single day of my entire life. Everybody fed? Everybody back where they need to be? Good. The fact that we suffered a wound on the last one, though, makes me wonder... Makes me wonder... He's still slightly wounded. I would love for him to be not wounded just in case because if he gets wounded now, that puts him in the direction of kind of a rapidly death spiraling. It puts him in a really bad situation because he'll be wounded next, which means his condition can actually deteriorate, which is really, really terrible. Since we've got a saw, I think we're going to go back to the decrepit squat. Day 14, that was a good trade. We helped each other out. Okay, he's talking about the guy that we gave the medication to. Yeah, frankly, we actually haven't had to use a whole lot of medication on this playthrough. Like, people haven't been feeling too amazing, but... I mean, we've been hanging in there. We've been hanging in there. Get them back in bed for a couple minutes just in case. I don't know if I should leave two guards tonight or if I should leave three and see if maybe I can get him to feel better. I think I'll have him... Yeah, I'll, let me see if I can get his condition completely taken care of by sleeping in bed for a night. We'll go back to the decrepit squat, which should have a bunch of stuff for us. Especially if we bring along the saw. I'm going to bring a lockpick just in case too because I don't know if we're going to get into that room and there's going to be a lockpick waiting around. Maybe bring a weapon as well. I mean, I can hide, but whatever. We'll make do. I think you can use the saw as a weapon if you have to. Just crack somebody in the head with it. Alright, so I don't want to deal with this guy right now. This guy down here had me a little bit worried last time and so I'd rather not kind of make him jumpy or agitated because he was kind of he wasn't confrontational but he definitely made it clear that he was ready to flex on somebody if he had to so from here we're probably going to handle our fuel supply for the remainder of the winter so anybody in here okay so there's a cabinet right there that I can get into if I wanted to get into a little bit of trouble and a bit more wood too now that does leave our componentry a tad lacking but if I bring home a stack of water, I don't actually think it's that bad. 
They can't get into the locked cupboards, so that's good. And we can saw our way through the gate right there to get ourselves access to a couple more supplies. Bunch of supplies in here, so yeah, this is the place to be if you're trying to find yourself some wood. For sure. We'll go ahead and saw that open, old school criminal style. Make with the Alcatraz and just file away at the bars for a minute. Does that break the saw permanently? Oh, you get one door per saw. Okay, so we got a dead guy over here. And so if there's anything useful in here, I'd rather take it with me right now. Quality roll-ups. Okay, I'm going to leave those where they are. Hopefully like a medicine cabinet or something in here. Okay, so we've got cigarettes. We've got some more water. That's stacked, so that's fine. I think grabbing some cigarettes is not a terrible idea. Like, we've got enough wood, and we can come back for the rest later. But I think taking all the cigarettes with us might be a decent plan, because we haven't had a trader for a while. And we could use some extra fodder to throw around just in case, and I haven't been cooking moonshine at all lately. Things have been less than satisfactory. I might grab these books as well, since people, I know that it said on our list of things that people wanted, it said that people were on the lookout for books, or that it would help us pass the time or something like that. In the worst case scenario, we can use it to make fuel, and so that's kind of the final sacrifice is literature. When times are hard, times are hard. What use is learning when at any moment you get the brains blown up out of your head, you know what I mean? This guy down here I don't think was hostile, I think he was just sort of jumpy. So I may try to unlock this first. We've got an access way out that way, so if somebody attacks us, we should be able to run without too many problems. I'll lockpick this open to get an extra inventory slot. That's going to give us some more cigarettes, actually. Okay. Well. Actually, we need the bullet. Bring the bullet with us. That's sort of a big deal. And so I'd say run to the exit right now and just get up out of here. Just make sure that nothing goes wrong. That building went pretty well for us, and we know that if we need more wood, that's the place that we have to hit up. I mean, that is the location, the locality. Day 18, and we go. Hopefully we didn't get hit too hard. I mean, it's getting dangerous around here. It's getting real dangerous. Okay, so we didn't get hit. The night was calm, so we managed to stockpile a little bit. And you'll forgive me because I made a little tiny cut there to check my timestamp because sometimes I use my phone as my timer, but I need to get a stopwatch and I just haven't done it. It's something that I forget about all the time. So I'm going to break it off right here. My name is Splattercat. Thank you for joining me at the Nerdcastle for the next episode of this War of Mine. I love this game. I love the concept. I love the survival. I love the base building. It's got a lot of things that I enjoy. If we end up doing a second playthrough, I'm going to try and be as violent as possible just to get a feel for that as well. But on this one, I feel like we've done a pretty good job at sort of staying on the outskirts of violence and just trying to make sure that we survive without taking anybody else's life. I think that we're doing pretty well. I'll see y'all later. Take care, everybody. I do.